Guys, things were not over. The Old Covenant wasn't passed until Christ returned. He said in Matthew 5, he said, Heaven and earth will pass away. But he said not one jot or one tittle would pass till heaven and earth passed away from the law. So then if that didn't happen yet, then we're all still in the law. And that means we need a temple, we need to be Jews, we need to be made proselyte, and that not one single thing is passed from the law until all things were fulfilled. So nothing passed till heaven and earth passed away. That's Matthew 5, if you go read it. Well, everybody's very confused about, and it's those 40 years-ish that Jesus died before he came back, and everybody thinking that they need to do those things, that they need to preach the gospel in all the earth. No, they already did that. He said that they already did that. Then he returned. Once the gospel is preached in all the earth, then the end shall be. Then he shall come. Paul said in a couple of the letters there that everybody had heard. He said, barely they've heard. Have they not heard? Barely they've heard. He said, their sound went out into all the earth and to the ends of the world, right? So everybody had heard, and they had no excuse. And now we live in the year of our Lord. Everybody knows about Jesus. They're born in that day, you know? Uh, it's much different today. But the main things that I'm getting into here is that the new covenant didn't actually, wasn't actually until Jesus returned. Everybody tries to say that the new covenant was whenever Jesus died and then sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the earnest of their inheritance. If you look up the word earnest, it means a down payment, a promise. It's like a promise ring. Hey, I'll marry you someday. You know, that's what the that's what the earnest of their inheritance was. That's what the Holy Spirit was. And if you read, um, it was only until the Holy Spirit, until the redemption of the purchased possession, until Christ returned. Some of them standing there didn't taste death until they returned. If you read in Revelation 21 here, it wasn't until a new heaven and a new earth. Everybody tries to say, this is the covenant that I will make with them in those days, saith the Lord. It's the Hebrews thing, where he puts those laws in their uh, hearts and in their minds will he write them and he will be to them a people and they will be his, or he will be their God and they will be to him a people, right? And he shall walk in them and dwell in them. That's well, also Jeremiah 31 or 33 or something. But here in Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This did not happen. They did not, this was not fulfilled. Jeremiah was not fulfilled. If it was already fulfilled, then why is he saying it now? Why is the tabernacle of God with men after they're already in heaven, after their bodies are already the temple of God? Everybody mixes up that verse in Hebrews, or maybe it was Romans, I don't remember, that says people's bodies were the temple of God. That's not true. Their bodies were the temple of God once they made it to heaven. Then he saw the temple in heaven, and there were 12 sides, and the name of an apostle on each side, and 12,000 cubits on each side, 144,000. And each cubit was the size of a man, that is, of the angel. That's their body becoming the temple of God once they made it to heaven. On earth, their bodies were a temple of the Holy Spirit, which was the earnest of their inheritance, like a promise ring from God saying that he was going to come back and get them. Okay, so that was not fulfilled. If that had already been fulfilled, then there's no need for it to be fulfilled once they're in heaven. But once they're in heaven, then you see that the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So that was after he was in heaven. So then you go back and you read these other things, like in Hebrews. So I'm just going to quote it because I don't want to spend the whole time looking for it here. But you go back and you read Hebrews, which talks about, you really have to read the whole thing because it talks about it the whole time. Um, but it's a new covenant, he said, that God would make a new covenant after those days, saith the Lord. God would make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And he would put his laws in their hearts and in their minds, right? And we saw that that wasn't fulfilled until they were in heaven. This wasn't already fulfilled on earth. This is why they were hoping. This is why they were hoping for what was to come. They were saying salvation was to come. And that in Hebrews, he says, or Romans, he says that, and Jesus would return again without sin unto salvation. 
right? So they were preaching about salvation. They were preaching about the new covenant that was coming. And the belief in Christ was going to get you into that new covenant. What is the new covenant? It's when there's no more tears, there's no more pain, there's no more death. It's once they were in heaven, their bodies are the temple of God, and they're up there in the sky somewhere. Their covenant was a heavenly covenant, not an earth thing. They didn't inherit the earth from the earth. They sat down on the throne with him, and they inherited the earth from heaven. So they inherit this earth from heaven, right? Um, people have so much wrong about this. If you read that in Hebrews, the point that I was getting at is he said, now, he said, since he said a new covenant, he made the first old. And he said, now that which waxes old and decayeth is ready to vanish away, right? So it wasn't gone yet. It was ready to. It was getting close. They were preaching about Jesus coming, preaching about salvation coming, and preaching about the new covenant, which is in heaven. The new covenant was in heaven. Whenever Jesus said, this is the blood of the New Testament, here, take this and drink it, Paul tells you that was to show the Lord's death until he came. He said, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Also, baptism was showing the Lord's death until he came. Once he came, it's different. This is why there's so much confusion today, because the things in the Bible are literally not to us. The things in the Bible have no bearing on us, have nothing to do with us. It's good history about how the Old Covenant was completed by 70 AD, by whenever Jesus turned in 66 or 70 AD, and whenever they went up into heaven, okay? I, for one, hope that we are still in that, that his blood now covers us, so we can also rise from the grave if we're found with a good heart and we're good people. But here, listen to 2 Corinthians. This is very important. Listen to this. Everybody's saying that their bodies back then were the temple of God and that our bodies are the temple of God and that we're already there or we've already made it or we've already attained. But listen to what these guys said. Okay, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, so there are they're talking, they're standing there, they have the Holy Spirit, and they say, For we know that if the our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, right? So people think that the house not made with hands is our body, but this is an earthen vessel. He doesn't dwell in earthen vessels. He just gave them the earnest of their inheritance, the down payment, waiting for the redemption, the purchase possession. So for in this we groan. Why are they groaning if they already have it? If they already have it, why are they groaning? For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Now, where is the house that's not made with hands? In heaven. What house will you build him? You can't. He's going to take you out of here. He's going to give you a place. He's going to prepare that place for you. You go up there. If so be that being clothed with, for being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Okay? And now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, in other words, while you live, you're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And if what do you hope for if it's already here? But they lived by hope. They had hope that Christ would return because the Spirit was given to them. It was given to them. That is how they knew that Christ was going to return, that he was real, that he was coming. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In other words, for this flesh to be dead. I'm in a straight between, between, betwixt two, you know, uh, having a desire to depart and be with the Lord, which is far greater, and it being needful for me to stay here and teach you, right? That's what Paul said. We, lay, we therefore labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. In other words, he wasn't saying that Okay, a lot of people want to think spiritually about this because we've made this whole thing, this whole 40 years of Christ dying and coming back into this spiritually, oh, look at this, our bodies are the temple of God. And, and uh, Jesus returns every time somebody gets born again or that's his returning or, you know, all of this spiritual mumbo jumbo that's got us all over the place. You know, everybody's a Gnostic now. Everybody's got their knowledge and Everybody feels their feelings and disagrees with everybody else. And the Holy Spirit reveals this to this person, this to this person, this to this person. Because we're all crazy. 
So Holy Spirit people now think that this is saying, well, their bodies were the temple and the tabernacle was talking about their body and that uh, it was bad to be at home in the body, right? It was bad to be at home in the body. But he said, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So he says, um, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And then he said, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. In other words, you can't be accepted of God if that verse is saying that it is bad to be at home in the body. But we desire to get rid of our flesh and, and be spiritual. Okay, That's not what it's saying. He didn't say anything bad about being present. He said, even whenever you're present in this body, you need to be accepted of him. Or whenever you're absent, because for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. He also makes it plain down here, but I forget what he said, uh, that they were hoping and waiting for to be reconciled to God, you know, all those things. So everybody has this. That's what people had to do to make sense of it, is say, well, we'll just think about this overly spiritually so that we can finally make sense of these things and oh we're already the temple of god and no you're not the temple of god doesn't die this body's not the temple of god there's no need for the blood of christ to cover something that is perfect it's never going to be perfect this temple is this temple sorry this uh body is going to die the temple of god is in heaven and their bodies were the temple of god once they made it to heaven they desired earnestly to be clothed with that which was from heaven, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, to be dead finally, and finally have what they were promised by the earnest of the inheritance, which was the Holy Spirit. All these things that people are reading, you read the whole thing. Don't just read one little spot, because he'll tell you that the old covenant was not over, that while the first, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that while the first tabernacle was yet standing, the holiest and the way into the holiest of all was not yet manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. So for them to make it and for their bodies to be the temple and for God to be with them and be their God and them to be his people, they had to preach the blood and the death of Christ and that he would return and destroy the temple. And that once he did that, once he destroyed that old covenant in the old world, they would then be in the new covenant, which is an everlasting covenant in heaven. And I sincerely hope that we can also make it there today. But you're not going to make it there by trying to do all the things that Christ already fulfilled. He already did these things. This already happened. And I'm just telling people what the Bible says, you know, about it. I can't do anything about beliefs that people say stem straight from God. Um, but that's never the case. They don't stem straight from God. And these beliefs that they have are always from the Bible and jumbled up from the Bible. That's why they quote it to back their beliefs, you know, but it's all done. It's over. All that was done. The new covenant didn't start until Christ returned. They were preaching about the new covenant, which was to come salvation to come, uh, Jesus to come, the kingdom to come. They were preaching all these things that the kingdom would come. Some of them standing there didn't taste death until the kingdom came until Christ returned in his kingdom. And that's not talking about the Holy Spirit coming or Mount Transfiguration, because the verse before that says he will return in the clouds and reward every man according to their works, which happened in the 11th chapter of Revelation at the seventh trumpet. And then the dead in Christ rose and the prophets were judged and given rewards. Right. That's whenever that happened. It didn't happen until Christ returned. So. Uh, all this spirituality is not what they meant he did not say he was talking to a pharisee whenever he said the kingdom of god is within you that's another thing he was talking to a pharisee he wasn't saying that the kingdom of god was in him he said for then he said then shall they not say lo here or lo there for the kingdom of god will be in you all right they still taught every man their neighbor saying know the lord actually that was their commission go teach everybody telling them to know the lord but the new covenant once they made it into heaven then shall God be in all of them, and shall they reign forever in an everlasting covenant, inheriting the earth from heaven. They had a reward eternal in the heavens. Okay, they're not down here. They're in the heavens. They're in heaven. Their body's the temple up there. 
I forget what I was going to tell you. You might already know what I was quoting. But oh yeah, every man. It wasn't until the new heaven and the new earth, until the end of the book of Revelation, that God was in all people, and he would be their God. And there's no need to teach their neighbor anymore, for he's in you, from the least unto the greatest. If there was no need to teach your neighbor, then they wrote a bunch of letters for nothing. Um, everybody's very confused because they think that it was fleshly. They think that the new covenant is here. They think that this body, and this this is the temple, and that we just we go by these feelings of what we think God's telling us. And it's just not true, guys. I'm just telling you what it actually says in the Bible. If the new covenant was already there, then why did it not happen until they were in heaven that the tabernacle of God was with man? Because men finally were allowed into heaven. Men were finally allowed into heaven. That's the tabernacle of God being with man. That's him dwelling in them and them being his God, uh, him being their God and them being his people.